And welcome to the session of working in Hawaii's growing IT sector, what the data says and steps you can take to secure your place in it. My name is Keala Peters, and I'm the uh, Executive Vice President of Education and Workforce Development at the Chamber of Commerce Hawaii. This presentation is going to be a joint presentation between the Chamber of Commerce and the University of Hawaii. We're glad that you're here. We hope that you're enjoying the initial 30 minutes of today's virtual job fair. There are so many wonderful employers here today who are eager to speak with you, recruiters who would uh, really like to spend time with you today. So we hope it's a fruitful day for you. And again, thank you for being here. Next slide. So presenting our workshop today is uh, myself and in addition, two colleagues of mine from the University of Hawaii. We'll be hearing from Alan Ito, who's the IT Workforce Development and Regulated Policy Lead for the University of Hawaii. And joining us will be Nicolette Vanderlee, Program Manager for HANA Career Pathways with the University of Hawaii Community Colleges. This is how we'll be spending our time today. First, we're going to be sharing with you the Hawaii IT Workforce Needs Analysis. And this is a recent report that was commissioned by the Chamber of Commerce and the University of Hawaii. And there's some really interesting findings there that for you as job seekers can help you formulate your next steps um, and hopefully gain some confidence in terms of uh, the opportunities that are out there for you. Following that, we'll talk a little bit about what employers in Hawaii are doing to support your entry into IT jobs. And then finally, we're going to spend a good amount of time talking about expanding your career options with certification UH community colleges. So at this time, it's my pleasure to turn the presentation over to my colleague, Alan Ito, with the University of Hawaii. Hi, everyone. Thanks, Keala. Um, I'd like to add my welcome to all of you and hope you have a good um, session uh, here uh, with the job fair. And um, as Kayla said, I'll be presenting the IT workforce uh, need study results. So the study was conducted uh, from June to September of 2021. It was conducted by SMS Hawaii, and it was a collaborative effort between the Chamber of Commerce of Hawaii, the Harold K. L. Castle Foundation, and the UH Community Colleges. The study utilized a number of, of different labor market data sets. Um, in addition, there was a survey conducted of um, Hawaii employers, and there was also um, interviews uh, conducted with select executives of uh, different employers in the state. Um, the objectives of the project were threefold. Uh, the first was to understand the gaps between the number of qualified people in Hawaii and the demand for IT jobs. Uh, second was to identify the gaps between what employers were looking for and the qualifications of the local job seekers. And the third was to begin to understand the future demand for IT jobs in the state. Uh, next slide, please. A real quick overview of the um, IT uh, sector in Hawaii uh, in 2020, uh, there were 12,740 IT jobs uh, that were categorized in the standard computer and mathematical um, occupational category. Um, there were 894 average annual job openings. There were 3,834 new hires, and there was about a 30% churn within the industry itself. Uh, the industry as a whole contributed over $2 billion to Hawaii's GDP. And um, interestingly, the average tech industry hourly rate, wage was 157% higher than the Alice average living wage. Alice is Aloha, an Aloha United Way acronym and stands for Asset Limited Income Constrained Employed. So these are people who are working and yet, um, you know, are having challenges uh, with the amount they make. Um, the hourly wage um, for IT uh, workers were $39.92 versus the um, average um, Alice wage, which was $15.53. Employment in the computer and mathematical occupation group in Hawaii is projected to increase 7% from 2018 to 2028. Now, one comment regarding these numbers is that um, there's a growing number of occupations that are classified as tech related. They may not necessarily fall within the standard computer and mathematical 
occupations category. So some of these numbers will actually be uh, lower uh, than what they, what they are in reality. Uh, next slide, please. Um, in terms of the different IT occupations out there, um, this is just a quick landscape of those jobs. Um, as, as I think uh, most of you know, when we talk about IT, you know, that's a pretty broad category and the IT occupations are very varied and numerous. Uh, so this table provides an overview of the diversity of IT occupations. The IT occupations that have the largest number of jobs are one, software developer and software quality tester. Uh, the second is users, users, user support specialists. And the third are computer systems analysts. Now of these two, um, of these three, two of them are also difficult to fill based on the number of job applications compared to job postings. And then of these three, only software developer and soft, software quality tester is expected to grow significantly um, into the future. Um, just a note that some of these um, occupations, while they have a higher growth rate, um, then because the numbers are smaller, the actual number of job openings you know, could be less. Uh, next slide, please. This table kind of takes a different cut at the data um, and it looks at the IT workforce supply and demand. Uh, the table shows that for in-demand IT occupations, the supply in Hawaii is not meeting the demand. Uh, the three occupations with the lowest amount of demand being met include computer system analysts, software developers and quality testers, and network and computer system administrators. Um, interestingly, uh, while it appears that demand for information security analysts um, is close to being met, it, it may be because the numbers are small, as I mentioned before, and then also um, the date, the data I believe is based on 2018 data. And I think as um, everyone is seeing, uh, the demand for security professionals is increasing. So, um, you know, again, this is a point in time and over time, you know, some of these numbers and uh, the demand for different IT occupations are going to change. So keep that in mind. Uh, next slide, please. <clears throat> okay, so now when we talk about job qualifications uh, for IT workers, um, they're categorized in the study in three areas. The first are technical skills. This includes basic foundational skills. Um, and in addition, they include uh, basic skills for the specific occupation you're seeking. And they also include uh, specific skills that the employer might be looking for. The second category are credentials. Uh, according to employers, credentials show that the applicant is qualified in a given area and also took the initiative to go ahead and get the credential. Credentials also carry different significance uh, between the different types of employers. So one of the things um, that as job seekers is that uh, the importance of credentials may be different. So if you're going, um, say, for a job downtown, um, you know, the credential, you know, again, will show that, you know, you took the initiative uh, to get the credential and that you have knowledge in a specific area. If you're seeking, for example, a DOD uh, contractor job, for a number of the DOD contractors, credentials are very important because um, they, they get points and they get credit, you know, for people who have specific credentials that are being sought. So, you know, again, depending on the kind of your job you're going for um, and who your employer, who your uh, prospective employer is, you know, the credential could actually be very important. Um, the last category here are professional skills. So according to employers, professional skills provide them with confidence that the applicant will be able to fit into the organization and apply their technical skills to address real world challenges. That's what a lot of the employers are looking for, not just have, having the technical skills and knowledge, but being able to apply it within the environment um, in their organiza organization. Uh, so professional skills is the area where work experience is really valuable. But in the absence of work experience, um, employers also look favorably on internships, apprenticeships, capstone projects, 
and other ways that you might get um, exposure you know, to a real uh, job environment. During the interview, as a job seeker, you really need to demonstrate to the employer that the technical skills and knowledge you have will benefit the organization and be able to explain to them and talk through them how your skills will benefit the organization. Next slide, please. So um, the employees were pretty consistent in their feedback. Um, in the study, depending on the IT occupation, employers feel that there are too few qualified candidates in Hawaii. They also shared that technical skills and credentials often do not align with the employer's needs. Uh, one of the comments was some of the um, certifications and credentials uh, were for yesterday's technology and not necessarily for technology uh, looking into the future. And that's what employers are seeking. Managers also complained that new employees often were not able to apply the technical skills to the workplace challenges, something brought up in the previous slide. And then finally, um, all employers um, shared that professional skills was the one area that they're all looking for, however they feel is uh, lacking in the job applicants. So I'd like to uh, turn it back to Kiala now to go over some of the recommendations of the study. Thanks, Alan. So hopefully as job seekers, those insights uh, are really informative to you. And again, these are Hawaii employers and Hawaii data um, that we've looked at to be able to really understand what we as a community can do to support people like you, people who seek uh, opportunities in, in IT. Um, and hopefully what Alan has just shared with you gives you a sense for where the opportunities are. Uh, and secondly, what you can do to increase your chances uh, for success. We heard about professional skills and on the job training. Um, so to, to wrap up the, the analysis, um, based on that Hawaii labor market data and the Hawaii employer input, um, there are five recommendations that um, the report uh, indicates employers and educators should do together to support people like you, job seekers in the technology space in Hawaii. The first is to find more opportunities to bring educators and employers together so that the training offered to people like you perfectly matches what the employers are seeking both for today and in the future. And so in our community, you'll see more opportunities for educators and employers to work with each other, to really hone in on the curriculum that's offered and the training that's made available. Number two, we recognize that we have to begin at an early age, talking to our kids in Hawaii about opportunities in technology. We want um, when children are young to understand what it means to work in technology, how if they're curious about how things work, um, that that could be a good indication that they would find a, a career in technology interesting. And so you'll see local employers get more involved in our schools doing things uh, like guest speaking and um, um, uh, mentor mentorships and internships. The third, and this pertains to all of you, it's so important that we provide more training opportunities for uh, uh, new graduates and students in Hawaii. And so you're going to see more employers in Hawaii uh, provide uh, internships and uh, other opportunities to get uh, on the job training. Um, really, really critical. As Alan said, you know, it's one thing to graduate with a, with a degree, but employers really want to know that you've had the opportunity to sharpen what are called professional or employability skills, things like teamwork and problem solving and communication skills. And so the employer community has made a commitment to provide more training opportunities um, to students and new grads, which is great news. The fourth recommendation also uh, pertains to you all, which, which is why we've bolded it here. Uh, the study indicates that you as job seekers uh, have experience that they as employers need to give you credit for, regardless of if you've earned a degree or not, you likely have experience or credentials that uh, they as recruiters need to 
uh, validate and give you credit for. So they're going to be looking at their minimum qualifications. And instead of saying we require a bachelor's degree, you're going to begin to see more and more employers say, well, perhaps a bachelor degree isn't a requirement. Instead, we'll recognize that they've gained really valuable experience either through work or through credential attainment or through um, internships. And that's great news. And then the fifth is, is related to data and just making sure that we're looking at outcomes and doing all that we can to support you as job seekers. So that's our study. We've presented or provided in the, in the chat a link to the full um, analysis and on the next slide as well, you'll see the URL where you can read it more in depth. Um, I think that the information Alan shared about the number of openings, the hardest to fill positions, that should be really, really valuable information to you all. So we're gonna uh, shift our focus right now from the analysis to what some of the uh, resources are for you all. So on the next slide, wanted just to highlight for you all that, that a number of employers are already uh, providing on-the-job training. And so here are just some of the opportunities, some of the employers in our community who have really rich experiences in the way of internships. Um, so if you haven't already, go to their websites. I know a few of them right now are in their application process. And these are paid internships. Uh, philosophically, all of these employers here, and in fact, most of the employers in Hawaii believe that internships should be paid opportunities or you should be able to get credit. Um, and so we encourage you to explore internship opportunities. It's a wonderful way to get that uh, on the job experience and really uh, communicate to employers that not only do you have the technical skills, but you have the professional skills as well. On the next slide, I want to introduce you to Hawaii is Hiring. You won't be able to read the, uh, the content here, but what I'd like to uh, encourage you to do is to go to hawaiiishiring.com and there are three areas um, of relevance for you all. The first is you'll find an, an aggregate of internship opportunities. Uh, and uh, there are about, I think, 17. Not all of them are in the IT arena, so they may not all be applicable, applicable to you. But the Chamber of Commerce hosts Hawaii is hiring. And um, every day they're scouring what's available and making sure that what you find here is the most up-to-date uh, co-located information for you. So hawaiishiring.com has internships uh, for you. And on the next slide, you'll also see that there's a page dedicated to the technology industry in Hawaii. This is rich with information that may be of um, help to you. Not only will you find out about uh, forecasted growth in your field in Hawaii, you can also watch Day in the Life videos and just get more of an understanding of what working in technology um, is, is, is like. And then on the next page, there also is a job board. And so you can filter by technology and see what jobs are available in, in Hawaii. You can filter by island. So if you're on Maui or Kauai, you can see what jobs are available um, on, on your island. So want to encourage you to check out Hawaii is Hiring. It's a great resource for you. And um, know that the employers um, want to support your success, uh, mutually beneficial for sure. At this time, I'm going to introduce my colleague, Nicolette, who's going to spend the rest of our time really providing some helpful information to you about um, how you can earn credentials and uh, other experience to set yourself up for success. So Nicolette, over to you. Thanks, Keala. Good morning, everyone. Uh, thanks for joining us today. Uh, excited to share some um, additional information through the Hawaii, uh, through the UH Community College system that we can offer to support um, your college and career goals, whether that is um, upskilling, if you're already working in the field, or uh, whether that is, um, you know, seeking to break into this field and um, looking for those opportunities um, to earn these certifications that will help you be more competitive uh, in your job uh, search or uh, meet those minimum qualifications that will help you uh, attain those jobs. So we're gonna discuss today, how can you expand those career options through industry certifications that the community colleges offer? Uh, we're gonna cover what are certifications, why are they valuable, 
how can they help you expand your career options and where can you actually earn these certifications? So let's start with what, what are certifications? Um, a certification is an industry credential that you would earn that's gonna demonstrate specialized knowledge, skills, and experience. And these certifications are awarded by professional associations, companies, and independent organizations so that there's really a standard in how uh, your skills, knowledge, and experience are being evaluated. And these certifications are all typically going to require some form of assessment, whether that's an exam or a demonstration of skills. Um, and some examples of certifications um, in healthcare industry, it would be something like a certified pharmacy technician. Um, and in the IT sector that you all are focused on, it would be something like the CompTIA A plus certification. We'll talk more about that. Uh, in detail today, and also something like the Project Management Institute's uh, Project Management Professional in, uh, Certification. So why are these valuable? You know, what, what is, why invest that your time um, and make of that financial investment to try to earn one of these certifications? Really the key is that this is going to validate your knowledge against industry standards. Uh, when you're applying for a job with an employer, if they see that you've earned the certification, that's going to check a lot of boxes for them that you're going to meet minimum qualifications, you're going to have that specialized um, knowledge and skills that they're looking for. It's going to support you to obtain workforce ready skills. Uh, it demonstrates to employers that you are ready to uh, take on the job that you're applying for. It also enhances your credibility. Um, you know, really demonstrating that, hey, you were very motivated and you made that investment to pursue this. That really helps set, can help set you apart from other applicants that wouldn't have the certification um, and help your resume, you know, rise to the top of the, of the pile. Uh, it also has the potential to increase um, your earnings over time. Um, you know, in some positions, by having a certification, you're automatically would be eligible for a higher wage versus others that don't have it. Uh, and we'll discuss how you can stack credentials and also help advance your earnings. And for many of you that may be here today, it's a it's an uh, incredible opportunity to be able to jumpstart a new career. Um, you know, through the impact of the pandemic, uh, you know, we see um, dependence on the visitor industry people furloughed, losing jobs during this time um, of, of economic uncertainty, pursuing a new career in the IT sector. It's growing. Uh, we're going to, as you can see today, there's so many employers present that are uh, looking to hire. Uh, so making this investment uh, in earning a certification can really help you pursue that new career pathway. So let's talk a little bit more about uh, certifications in the IT sector. Uh, I mentioned an example would be the CompTIA a certification. So this is awarded by the Computing Technology Industry Association. Um, it is the industry standard for launching IT careers. So it's a great starting point if you don't have prior experience working in IT. Um, and it's essentially demonstrating IT support skills, including security to cloud to data management. Um, jobs that are going to uh, use this uh, A plus certification skill set would be something like a help desk tech, service desk analyst, desktop support admin. Um, and the requirements to earn the certification are a passing score on two uh, core exams that uh, are required. Uh, for a certification like this, after taking a, an exam prep training, you would pay the exam fee of you know just over two hundred dollars. So you know it's it's an investment. Um, but again, it's gonna help establish that you're meeting that industry standard. Another certification I wanted to highlight today is project management certification, which you know, has more of a multidisciplinary um, opportunity. Um, this is awarded by the Project Management Institute. It's a, 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 also an internationally recognized certification. And um, it's uh, including predictive, agile, and hybrid approaches to project management. So it gives you a really diverse, um, you know, set of tactics and strategies for project management. And uh, in the case of this one, it does require that you have minimum um, educational um, history, whether it's a bachelor's degree, uh, but it also could be just a minimum of a high school diploma or associate's degree, and then also a number of years of experience. 
So if you have a bachelor's degree, it would require that you have at least three years of um, work experience leading projects. Um, if you have a, a high school or associates uh, level, it would require five years of uh, project management work experience. And then they also, uh, in order to take the exam, you would have to have had 35 hours of project management training. Um, and I'll share with you an opportunity through the community colleges to earn that. Um, and then again, a passing score. So this one is a more expensive um, certification, 555. Um, and, you know, again, it demonstrates you're willing to make that investment in your professional development. This is also a, a valued certification among Hawaii's employers. So how do these certifications, you know, expand your career options? Um, we know from industry research that 80% of good jobs today require some form of post-secondary uh, credential, which basically means after high school, some form of training and achievement, whether that's industry recognized, like the ones we're talking about today, um, a certificate or associate or bachelor's degree. So what's, you know, I think really cool about these industry credentials is these are short-term trainings. Um, you can take a training that's uh, two to three months, uh, take these industry certification exams and be able to achieve this form of a credential. So it's really a, um, you know, a rapid response approach to what employers are looking for. Um, and ultimately, it's going to be able to demonstrate uh, that you're meeting those minimum or desired qualifications for jobs, provide evidence of the industry competencies, stand out from other job applicants, and demonstrate motivation to the employers, as I mentioned before. Uh, you can also uh, look at credentials as part of a pathway in your college and career uh, progression. So uh, this is a model for um, how we can sort of understand how does education relate to um, job and career advancement. So kind of, you know, following the flow of the arrows, you can start with, um, you know, coming out of high school, earning uh, an entry level certification, and that can lead into low skilled, semi skilled, middle skilled jobs as you um, advance in earning more um, educational credentials. And then ultimately, uh, continuing to pursue associate and bachelor degree level is going to lead you into those advanced skilled jobs. So thinking about your um, college and career goals along that pathway, uh, you can you can see that an industry industry credential is really a great way to begin to start to um, advance along that uh, advancing pathway. Uh, here in Hawaii, uh, we actually have some really exciting current resources to share. Um, as part of a collaborative effort uh, by Hawaii P20, Castle Foundation, Kamehameha Schools, and other uh, industry groups, including Chamber of Commerce Hawaii, um, a report was developed uh, through the Hawaii Career Pathways Initiative called the Promising Credentials Report. And this was essentially a needs assessment surveying um, our local Hawaii employers actually during the pandemic, so it's very current information, of what are the most valued credentials from our employers' perspectives. Um, and I'll just uh, give you a brief tour of this website because it's a great resource to uh, understand what uh, potential credentials are. Um, let me just share that screen. Okay, so on the Promising Credentials website, you can browse through uh, four different types of credentials. Uh, foundational are just real entry level ones. Actually, none of these are relevant for IT. Um, within the springboard credentials, these are ones that are gonna uh, lead into industry specific skills. Uh, so for example, the CompTI Network Plus um, certification is listed here. And you know what's great about this resource is it's going to give you that information in terms of what's the median wage for um, someone earning this credential. Uh, it's gonna share uh, sample occupations, whether it's a computer user support specialist earning 22 an hour, um, advancing up to the systems administrator level at uh, 38 per hour. Um, and just gives you some uh, more detailed information uh, in terms of uh, you know, the cost of this exam, for example, 329, it's good for three years. Um, so you know, really some great resources that you can access 
through um, this Promising Credentials site. Go back to my other presentation. Okay, so um, another way you can think about these credentials is that you can actually stack them. So the concept of, of a stackable credentials um, approach is that it's a sequence of credentials that you can accumulate over time, and that's gonna help you move uh, forward on your career pathway or up the career ladder. And there's actually three different um, types of stackable credentials, kind of the traditional ones we might think about are, you know, if you're going to earn a Microsoft Office certification or um, an Office Administration, um, you know, these are just sort of expected credentials that you might have uh, working in, um, you know, just in, in work in general. Um, you can then start to accumulate more value add credentials. This is really going to help um, distinguish your skill set. So something like the project management professional that I mentioned earlier, or something like a scrub master. Um, these are really going to be value add that are um, uh, unique credentials that have a pretty very deep skill set that you're going to acquire. Um, and then also the independent stackable credentials are ones that you could actually potentially do in any order. Uh, typically, people do start with an A plus, and then you might decide are you going to go network plus or security plus, depending on your pathway in IT. Um, but having any of those types of credentials uh, is really de demonstrating a you know, very specific skill set that you can accumulate over time. So thinking about the credentials and the connection to the job opportunities, um, at the community colleges, we've identified um, three key pathways um, that you can explore. Um, a first pathway would be focused more on technical support. So this would be leading to jobs like service desk analyst, help desk tech, um, and the CompTIA A plus credential um, is what prepares you for that course. So um, if you are, you know, completely new to uh, working in this industry, you might think first taking a computer literacy course through the community colleges, for example, then advancing to an I course, get that basic knowledge. Uh, then you could enroll in a specialized A plus. Uh, training and certification prep course, and then you would actually advance and be prepared to take the CompTIA uh, certification exam itself. Um, similarly, a network support specialist path, um, you know, we recommend um, in this case that you really are going to have to have uh, about a year's worth of experience um, working in the sector already. You would then enroll in a training course, take your exam. These, this is going to lead you to um, higher level positions such as um, computer technician, network support specialist. And then finally, uh, in the cyber uh, you know, field, jobs such as security administrator, these are also going to require, um, in most cases, that you would have prior experience working in IT. Uh, you, would then you could take a cybersecurity fundamentals course, uh, enroll in your prep course, and then take your certification exam. So, you know, thinking thinking ahead to the step-by-step -step process to uh, break into these uh, job opportunities. Um, again, CompTIA, uh, fantastic set of certifications, and uh, I have links here to their website to um, explore what's required for each one. Uh, so another opportunity I want to share with you today is that the UH Community Colleges uh, were awarded a $13.3 million grant from the Department of Education called HANA Career Pathways. Uh, and this is a project in Hawaii that's focused on providing short-term trainings leading to industry credentials in the resilient sectors of healthcare technology and skilled trades. And this is offered statewide through all the community colleges. Um, to be eligible for funding, uh, because the grant can actually fund your tuition uh, for these tra uh, certification training programs, as well as the books and the exam fees. So, you know, I shared with you, hey, some of these exam fees are two to $550 range. Um, we could actually fully fund um, your training and certification through this grant. Um, to be eligible for our funding, you would be not currently working, whether it's unemployed, furloughed, or dislocated. You could also be what we're calling underemployed. Um, and this would be where you may be working part time, less than 20 hours per week, uh, or you may be earning less than $20 per hour. 
Uh, we also can look at it if you're earning less than 38,000 per year, then you would be considered underemployed in Hawaii as you're not actually attaining that living wage goal. You also have to be a US citizen or green card holder. Um, and unfortunately, current high school students are not eligible. Uh, but this, this program is really intended to help upskill our workforce that may be impacted by COVID uh, or not at, uh, attaining a living wage yet. So um, we encourage you to uh, consider applying for our funding. Um, <clears throat> I'll give you a quick tour of our website here, uhcc.hawaii.edu slash reimagine. Just stop sharing and get to the other website. Okay, so um, here's our website. Uh, you can click on the training tab and see the list of all of the current trainings that we're offering through this grant. Uh, again, with the full sponsorship for eligible participants. Uh, you can click on the technology tab to explore our specific technology course offerings. I mentioned the A-plus certification, uh, for example. This is offered at Honolulu Community College. You can see the next uh, start date is March 2nd. You can expand to see some more details. Uh, so in this case, this is offered statewide. It's an online synchronous course, meaning there's set times, uh, 4.30 to 7.30, twice a week. The value of this training is $14.95. Uh, but for el eligible participants, we would um, fund that for you. Um, you can also see some information related uh, to the occupations out there. And to apply, uh, you would complete this application on our website where you can select the schedule that's available, um, fill out all your information and submit it. We will immediately review your application. Um, and be in touch to determine if you're awarded funding based on your eligibility, um, as we'll you know, evaluate the information of whether you're working or not, how many hours a week you're working, et cetera. Um, another one I just wanted to highlight, let's see. It's not showing, that's interesting. Let me stop sharing so I can make sure I show you the specific page that I wanted to show you. So um, I'm not sure if you all saw that, but you would basically go to the current trainings page, click on te the technology tab here, and then you can scroll down. Um, another uh, exciting uh, training that we have coming up is the project management training. Let's see. Guys, was that working for you to see the actual um, training page on the website? We did. We, we were seeing it we when did. you showed it. It's gone now, though. Okay, it's back now. All good. Okay, thank you. Uh, so uh, the other uh, training I wanted to highlight today is the project management professional that I mentioned. The next section is starting February 21st. Um, and this is a 60 hour online training. Um, it will have uh, some Saturday Zoom sessions, but mostly it's actually asynchronous. So you can complete the coursework on your own time. Um, so just wanted to highlight a couple of these opportunities that are coming up uh, this, uh, this coming uh, month. Okay, let me get back to my presentation. So I just wanted to share uh, my contact information. Um, if you have any questions about uh, trainings available on the website, uh, the certifications we're offering or eligibility for the HANA Career Pathways program, um, feel free to reach out to us at training at hawaii.edu. Again, our website there, uhcc.hawaii.edu slash reimagine. Um, and this uh, grant will be funded for the next uh, two years. So, um, you know, you're all here uh, seeking jobs now. It's a great time to apply for our programs, help us uh, give you the additional skills and certifications to support your career advancement. Thanks for your time today and uh, look forward to answering any questions that you all may have. Thanks, Nicolette. What a wealth of information. Really, this is such a uh, opportune time for job seekers to be uh, earning credentials and, and sharpening their resume. So uh, thank you for sharing all of that.
So if there are areas that you'd like uh, us to go deeper in, if you have any questions or even any comments, we welcome your participation in the chat. In the meantime, I am going to summarize. So this session is called what the data says and steps you can take to secure your place in it. So there really are four steps that, that I want to highlight for you and, and summarize based on the presentation that you just heard. The first is number one, know what's out there and know what Hawaii employers value in terms of credentials and skills. And you can, you can learn that by taking a look at the, the IT workforce analysis. So really understand the landscape out there. Number two, recognize how important credentials and training are um, beyond just any uh, technical skills you've, you've learned or degrees you've attained. Number three, with respect to training, See it as a stepping stone. See it as something that employers truly, truly value. And uh, with any training that you've already received, highlight it on your resume, highlight, highlight it in interviews, and know that um, from what we've heard from employers, it is as important as any education that you've received. So if you've had internships, if you've had um, any type of training, do highlight it. And then number four, um, just kind of segueing off of Nicolette's presentation, is to invest time into attaining credentials, uh, even while you're employed or looking for employment. There are, there's funding out there for you right now uh, to be able to uh, earn those credentials. And based on what Nicolette just shared, you also now know how to prioritize certain credentials over others. Your time is valuable. Um, and I really, really appreciated the pathway slide that Nicolette shared in terms of the credential attainment and, and, and how you can stack credentials uh, to lead to positions like security administrator, network support specialist, et cetera. So those are four takeaways that I wanted to highlight for you in terms of steps that you can take to secure your place in Hawaii's uh, IT workforce. And um, if there are questions, go ahead and, and let us know. And uh, if not, we'll thank you for joining our presentation uh, this afternoon or this morning. And know that there are dozens and dozens of employers who are eager to speak with you. Um, so please take this and put your best face forward and enjoy the, the tech virtual uh, fair today. Again, thanks for joining us. Aloha.